G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. I'm sure you've heard the cliche, aphorism, truism, social wisdom. The story is that Einstein once upon a time said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and trying for a different result. Yes? Is that right? Well, I've been pissing around with that uh, definition of insanity. I've been trying to make one change per time, again and again and again for 27 times. Because here we is on the 16th of January, and 10 days ago, see what it says there, Rubite Air Boom Pool, all day patch efforts 10 patches and it also says fire rangers valley four water bombers and so while i was trying to remedy this then just to make life a little bit more interesting at about four o'clock in the afternoon out there i commenced to be seeing the smoke and it turned out to be five miles away and most of the uh, RFS units in the local area responded. Plus, yeah, four fire bombers and a fire bird, that's a helicopter, to coordinate the response. So, as the last of the fire bombers and the fire bird made their passes over the fire ground and set off at sundown, and uh, I was pretty sure my son was out there. It turns out he was there till 2.30 in the morning. There I was, desperately trying to put patch number 9 and number 10 on the kangaroo bite in the air boom in the boy wall. Now, boy wall, B-U-O-Y-W-A-L-L. -L. It's actually a contraction. It's short for buoyant wall. And the idea is you build a bag, a flat-bottomed bag, which has slightly conical sides. So the entrance at the top is narrower than the base. And then around the top, you put a cylindrical circular boom of compressed air. And therefore, no matter how much water is in the boy wall, it's supposed to sort of rise and fall. And the cheapest boy wall I could find was a 12 foot diameter Intex 30 inch high swimming pool, which is between five and six thousand litres depending on how hard you push it. And ten years ago they were $170, and five years ago they were $100. So this thing here has been storing five to six thousand litres of water for ten years, and everything has been fine. But before somebody realised that it would be polite to share one's water with the local wildlife during the drought and therefore set up some watering points, the local kangaroos, about five or six years ago, they developed uh, an endearing mannerism wherein they climbed up onto the top of the boy wall which had an ultraviolet cover over the top of it which is currently in repose and in order to drink 300 mils of water about 300 litres would go past the kangaroo's ankles so therefore some star pickets and some chainsaw milled timber was put into service and some uh, erosion control shade cloth salvaged from the dump was also put into service but five years of use and yeah for the last year there hasn't been much of an erosion control shade cloth fence to keep the kangaroos off the pool and therefore thus and because 10 days ago I'm pretty sure it was Rowan of Rin my biggest friendliest alpha male decided to come in through this gap here where, you know, he'd seen me get water many times to fill the dishes and he decided to have a bit of a go. And uh, 
That there is what Rowan of Rin or some other kangaroo has done to the air boom. And of course I woke up and come out here at 7 o'clock in the morning and discovered the air boom was flat and I was desperately afraid of losing what might have been 4,000 litres of water. It's probably closer to 3,000 litres now because, you know, one has to wash one's clothes and have a shower and share it with the wildlife. And so, thinking speed was the essence, I quickly attempted to patch it with the materials at hand, which consisted of fragments of previous ultraviolet covers and uh, stuff called contact cement, which costs about 12 or 13 dollars for uh, a 100 mil tube. And what I found, because back then I didn't have any pre-manufactured crutches or struts or props as I have at the moment to hold the collapsed air ring above the level of the water. What I found was that the very first patch wasn't a really good patch and then because before it had cured or gone off it was expected to hold air it failed and therefore thus and because I put another patch over the top thinking that this time I would get it right and each time I was sort of trying to seesaw between how much pressure I blow into the air ring, how much form I get into the air ring, how much stretch the air ring develops under pressure from the inside, particularly when you take into account the fact that during the day the temperature is up around the 100 degrees Celsius on the surface of PVC because you've got sunlight building down onto an air insulated surface. So what seemed to happen was every day around 10 or 11 o'clock the pressure in the air ring exceeded the temperature resistance ability of the contact cement and so the compressed air found its way out and you know warbles trying again and again and again and again but when patch 20 was leaking and they seemed to hold all right as long as I didn't put too much air in them then I wandered off to town on Monday this week and I ordered some brand new special high-tech glues and I tried the best that they had because this stuff obviously didn't handle the high temperature and this stuff might have been okay but for the fact that it tried to bond onto this tubular circular air boom which is a pressure vessel and it's a flexible pressure vessel so the bigger the patch and by this time they'd grown to be 22 inches long and I was just desperately trying to contain compressed air at high temperature on a pressure vessel which changed shape and changed volume so that effectively the bigger the patched area the worse it all was. So finally I decided when I got to 27 patches that did not bloody work to construct some crutches out of poly pipe and even an old canoe paddle to suspend the bag in six places so that despite the fact that the boy wall isn't functioning the bag is still holding water I've still got me 3,000 litres I've given up on the ultraviolet cover as a bit of a distraction you know not worth bothering about and the next step is going to be to try and place a patch on the inside of this kangaroo bite and I'm figuring if I make a round patch with about an inch overlap all the way around that out of a piece of used motor car tyre inner tube rubber which I won't actually collect off the ground like that because the proper hillbilly hermits
creed is save it, use it up, make it do, don't waste it. And therefore, if we pull the repaired salvage thrown out chair away from in front of the clothes pile, we find chunks of inner tube rubber ready to be contact cemented or even better ready to be full of preen 303 universal adhesive sealanted which works just like contact cement but on about a three minute basis instead of a 20 minute basis and whereas this really doesn't seem to deal with 50 or 60 degrees celsius this is supposed to be good for 115 and instead of the compressed hot air in the heat of the sun pushing directly from inside the air boom onto the glue adhesive and then being able to directly undermine the join I figure if I have a disc of rubber which is thicker and stiffer than the um, the polyvinyl chloride of the boom then the air pressure should stick the patch onto the inside of the hole and hold it in there it's a bit like you know patching your space station after a meteorite ruptures it there's no point going to the outside and sticking your patch on from there what you got to do is put a sticky patch on the inside and let the pressure differential hold the patch in place and then because the fuller preen 303 which is the fastest setting which is why I'm going to use it first because it doesn't like being permanently wet then I'm going to put two patches over the top of it both made from polyvinyl chloride cut from an old expired air mattress which had nothing wrong with it except the rat chewed one corner off and for the first patch over the top I'm going to use this Selly's Ultra Repair Glue for extreme conditions, infinitely more flexible with a strong seal and polymer technology, good for minus 15 to plus 120 degrees Celsius. And the theory is that any sort of mildly compressed warm air that manages to make its way past the fuller preen 303 is not going to get past that shit. But any that does manage to get past that shit, then the next patch, it's a goanna be fighting with Selly's Aqua Repair waterproof epoxy adhesive in a two pack, right? And uh, $17.5, $8.5, $10.5, $12.5, $13.5, $14.5, $15.5, $16.5, $17.5, $18.5, $19.5, $20.5, $21.5, $22.5, $23.5, $24.5, $25.5, $26.5, $27.5, $28
Today's forecast, top temperature for Adelaide was 46 degrees, for Melbourne it was 44 degrees. They figure tomorrow they're going to have 40 degrees until sundown and then there's going to be a cool change with a wind shift which means that the sides of all their fires are going to turn around 90 degrees and take off in a different direction. And because we had no winter last year, the entire countryside is parched. Australia is sitting on a fuel bomb. I'm at 30 degrees south of the equator. And my midday temperatures in January have been 30 degrees, 32 degrees, 36 degrees, 35 degrees. 32 degrees, 33 degrees, 23, 20, 18, 23, 23, 28, 26, 26, 26. Let's go and see what it was today. Today we were looking at 29. Okay. So there's another heat wave just about to start at Western Australia. The hot weather, which has been baking South Australia and Victoria and the southern half of New South Wales for the past couple of days is kind of more or less sort of headed this way and my top dam's empty, my house dam is empty and my main dam, 100,000 100, gallons, it's got maybe 30,000 gallons in it but it's 750 metres away and I can't pump from it nor can I drive to it. So this 3,000 litres of water is what I've got to wash in. It's what I've got to shower in, do my clothes in. And it's what I've got to argue with any bloody bushfires that might happen to come my way somewhere between now and March 2015 because we've just slipped from a neutral year into an El Nino year which means Maybe we can expect spring rains next year, maybe not, maybe autumn rains next year. So, yeah, it matters. And I'm confronting insanity by trying to do something different. I've pulled off 27 patches that didn't work, and I'm drying it out, and I've propped it up, and I'm going to try patching the boom from the inside. Warbles on a lot to YouTube just in case you was wondering where I've been. Hopefully in a day or two, when I know what's going on, I'll be able to post another movie with a happy ending. But at the moment I've got 10 days of fuck ups and I hope I've got the turn around now. In the meantime, Clark Rubber is sending me three new ultraviolet covers because even if this pool can't be repaired, those crutches will hold the water in there until it's all gone. And when it's all gone from use and evaporation, then I will deploy a new pool in the same location with a better fence around it to keep the kangaroos out. Warbles on a lot to the YouTube. Ciao.